All right, welcome back once again to uh, our next video in our distance learning uh, environment here. I guess we're going to be doing for the rest of the year now. Uh, hopefully, uh, the goal this week is to finish up conic sections. Now, we don't have anything, any new conic section to talk about. Remember, we started off with parabolas, and then we did uh, ellipses and kind of circles in that same week. Uh, and then last week, we talked about hyperbolas. That's it. That's all. That's all there are of conic sections. But everything we saw was in what we call standard form, where uh, you were basically, you know, given the a and the b value and the, and the center or the vertex, you know, hk, and you just had to find the different attributes from that. Well, sometimes we're given uh, what we call general form of a conic section. So what we need to do is be able to take that general form and transform it back into standard form so that we can find all the different attributes, right? And to do that, we're going to use something from Algebra 2 called Complete the Square. So uh, hopefully this week is just going to be some algebra review, maybe knocking some rust off of that old algebra machine, uh, but really just kind of doing some of that algebra to figure out what these different attributes are, okay? So let's take a look first at uh, what, what does general form look like? Well, it's going to look something like this. So you're going to have a lot of times you're going to have two different square terms, and this is going to look like a big old mess. Sometimes there's some bigger numbers in there, uh, but the way I generally engineer these things as far as fraction problems is they're still going to come out to be uh, clean at the end. So to kind of keep that in mind also. Okay, so the question is, how do we change that back into the standard form that we already know? Well, before we do that, let's, let's kind of review real quick what those standard forms look like. So remember for circle and the ellipse, we basically did those at the same time because uh, we, you know, when we talk about the ellipses, if that A and the B value were the same thing, that was kind of the special case of the ellipse, which became the circle, right? So that's what we did uh, for those two guys. Remember H, and I'm not gonna go through all the different attributes uh, I'll, I'll post links to the different videos from the last few weeks down, the, down in the description. Uh, but that's your circle and ellipse. Uh, there's your two equations for the different hyperbolas, whether it's going horizontally or vertically. And then, of course, we had the parabola, which, again, the y equals was an up, and, an up or down parabola. And if it was x equals, it was a left or right parabola. Okay, and again, we went through all those attribution boards, so this is not what, uh, what I'm going to talk about here. But if you want to take a picture of this or jot this on your paper, um, it is something you need to be able to recognize kind of which one is which. Okay, so if you deposit a video and jot these down or snap a, snap a picture with your phone, I encourage you to do that. So how do we complete the square? Uh, and again, this is right from algebra, so this shouldn't be anything big, but it might have been a while since you've seen it before. So let's talk about the different steps. So generally speaking, we're going to get the variables on one side and the constants on the other. Okay? We're going to divide what we call the linear term, what you might have called the B value back in algebra 2. We're going to divide that by 2. We're going to square it, and we're going to add it to both sides. We're going to factor that left-hand side with the variables and, and it's important that you see it's always going to be in that in the in the form of a perfect square. So x plus or minus that b over two value that you just found in the previous step, and then the whole thing squared is always going to be that exact same way. And you'll see that as we do the examples here in just a minute. So let's let's go through that process. I'm not going to do a conic section yet, but I'm going to go through like a problem you would have you would have last year in algebra. Uh, just to go through the process, okay? So let's say we wanted to solve something like this. And we're going to pretend for, for uh, the time being that we neither have a calculator nor that we, and we also going to pretend we don't know the quadratic formula. So we're going to kind of do this kind of the old school way, okay? So remember the step we just talked about. So I want to get the variables on one side, right? So I'm going to add one to both sides. Look like that. Now, that B value that I was talking about is this 8. Okay, so that next step, I'm going to divide that B value by 2, which would be 4. I'm going to square 4, and I'm going to add it to both sides. 
Okay, so that's what it would look like. And again, add to both sides because whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So it would be the exact same thing. Okay, now I'm not always going to write this step here down, but notice four squared is 16, right? Duh. And then if we, we can just combine these guys on the, on the right to get 17. But notice this guy now, we can factor this because what multiplies is 16 but adds 8, well, it's 4. And that's why, that's why that number right there, that half B, is always going to be in that place. Okay, so, so that becomes X plus 4 squared equals 17. Now, to be honest with you, I almost stopped right here because this is the step that we need for conic sections. Okay, but because I'm a math teacher and I like talking about solving things, uh, if you were back in algebra 2 and wanted to solve this for x, well, it's easy now because all you got to do is take the square root of both sides and then subtract 4. Okay, so that would be your solution. But this guy right here, this is our important step that we're going to be really talking about in just a minute when we get into a conic section. Okay? Let's do one more example. In fact, if you want to go and pause the video and just see if you can remember that process on your own for this quadratic, see if you can get that in that, uh, that form to where it's a squared thing equal to a number. So remember, what do we do first? Get the variable, variable by itself. So I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. Okay? Divide that B value. What's my B value in this case? Well, in this case, it's negative 10. So I'm going to divide that by 2, square it, and then add it to both sides. So if you divide negative 10 by 2, what do you have? You got negative 5, so I'm going to add that negative 5 squared to both sides. The sign is important. Okay? And remember, when you square negative 5, that just becomes positive 25, so that's fine. But remember, factoring... When I factor the left, it is x minus 5 squared. So remember that b over 2 value is always going to be right inside of your parentheses, okay, automatically. Don't even have to think about it. And again, that's the important spot right there, right? So um, for just a minute, we need the conic section. We're going to stop there, but just for the sake of completion, if you're in algebra, that's what, that's what the solution will look like, okay? I'm going to do one more example before I get into conic sections, but I want to show you one with a leading coefficient and how it's just a, not, not different, but there's one little wrinkle you got to kind of think about. Okay? But again, we're going to start off the exact same way. We're still going to get the variable, variable by itself, so we're going to add 13 to both sides. So we have that. Now, here, there's some different methods to do this. I like finding the GCF because there's usually going to be a GCF that we can deal with. So notice in this case, I can take a three out of that left-hand side. And if I factor that out, it's going to look like this. With the x squared minus 6x, now I can do, I complete the square inside of the parentheses. So again, my b value is negative 6, so I can divide that by 2, square it, and add it to both sides. Oh, but here's the wrinkle. Okay, my, my b value is definitely negative 3, negative 6 divided by 2. But when I add it to both sides, I have to bring this leading coefficient along for the rise. So I'm really adding 3 times negative 3 squared. Okay, super important that you remember that. Okay, so if you do have a GCF in front, make sure and bring that GCF over to the other side also. Okay, I factor this. And again, I didn't do that intermediate step because I know that negative 3 is going to go right inside of that parenthesis. Okay? And notice the 3 is still outside. Okay? <clears throat> and the 38 just comes from here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So negative 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 plus 11 is your 38. Okay? And again, I'm going to stop there uh, when we do the conic sections. There's the rest of your solutions in case you're curious. Um, but again, the important spot here is to get this in our factored form, and then we're going to be good for our conic sections. Okay? So let's do this with a conic section. And I'm going to use those same ones that I had on that initial screen. So here's our, our big first ugly one. 
that we want to find out which conic section it is. Now, at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you kind of a shortcut to be able to look at this right away and know what conic section you have. So that'll be here in a couple minutes at the end of this video. That's a good couple more examples. So again, guys, the process stays the same. We want to get the variables by itself. But in this case, I've got two variables, but that's okay. Okay? So the steps are going to be this. So we're going to gather, gather the variables on one side. Um, unless there's only one squared term, it's a little bit different case. It's our parabola case. But we'll talk about that in just for a second. Complete the square, and then again, stop the factored form. So here's our first one. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides, just like normal. Okay, and now that same, that last example I did with the GCF, we want to find a GCF of each pair. So one GCF for the X pair, one GCF for the Y pair. So for the X's, notice I can take a nine out of both of those. And out of the Y's, I can take a four out. So it'd be written like this. Complete the square on both of those. Now this is gonna be kind of a long one, so bear with me here. So half of four is two, half of negative six is negative three. And notice when I add it to the other side, the leading coefficients, the GCFs, come along also. So it's nine times two squared and four times negative three squared. Okay, now when I simplify this, notice you can just do the little bit of arithmetic there. So both of those end up being 36, that will usually not happen, but in this case, uh, nine times four and four times five equals 36. When I factor it, remember guys, when you factor, that inside number is going to be how you factor it. So that's going to become x plus 2 squared. That's going to become y minus 3 squared. Okay. And then this whole side here just becomes 36. And remember, that's where we're going to stop. So all we've got to do now is divide everything by whatever that constant is on this side. Okay. So we divide everything by 36. And then sure enough, when you simplify that, 9 over 36 becomes 1 over 4, so I can rewrite that as x plus 2 squared over 4. And then here, this becomes x plus 5 minus 3 squared over 9 equals 1. And sure enough, we, might, we should be able to recognize that. That's our old friend, the ellipse. And then we can go hk, we can find a and b, we can graph it, all the different attributes and stuff like that. Okay? So that's the process. Once you know, once you know how to complete the square, you can find everything you need to do to get your focus points and vertex or whatever else you want to find and be able to graph these things. Just look at one more example. Actually, we've got two more, uh, but let's go and do one more here. So we have this one, and there's some big numbers here, but again, they're generally going to be engineered to come out cleanly. So keep that in, in the back of your mind as you do this. So what's the first thing we do? <clears throat> well, get that constant to the other side. So I'm going to add 784. Look for your GCFs. Ask yourself real quick, what's your GCF of the Y pair? What's your GCF of the X pair? Well, in this case, 16 and 25. And I'll give you a hint. It's usually whatever that leading coefficient is of the squared term, that's probably going to be your GCF. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're doing these also. If you take a 16 out, you have the plus 2y. Make sure in, if you see a minus sign in front, of, in front of one of the squared terms, make sure and take that negative out. Okay, so in this case, it'll become x squared plus 8x. Complete the square. So half of 2 is 1, half of 8 is 4. Take care of the other side here. And notice that minus sign, whatever that coefficient is, that minus sign comes along too, okay? I'm gonna simplify all that stuff. And notice that becomes 16. This is negative 400. And you can use a calculator on these if you need to, for sure. Factor the left-hand side. Simplify the right-hand side. And at this point, I'm just gonna divide by 400. You know, one equal to one. And if I do that, 16 over 400, 25 over 400, those simplify nicely to that. 
And all of a sudden, that should ring a bell as a hyperbola because we have that minus sign in between those two terms. So remember, that's kind of the dead giveaway for hyperbolas. And then we can find all of our attributes together. The last one I want to do for you here is uh, one with only one square term. Little tiny wrinkle here, not much of one, but if you do only see one squared term, just keep that that pair that's squared on one side and get everything else to be up because the linear term really doesn't affect the whole lot. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to isolate the x's and I'm going to get the y and the 80, that negative 80, to the other side. But now I just do the same thing. I'm still going to complete the square on the x's on whatever it is squared. So take that GCF out of 2, divide your b value by 2. So you got negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Take care of that on both sides. Factor the left hand side and simplify the right hand side. So I got 2 times x minus 6 squared equals y minus 8. And then to get it in your standard form, you just want to isolate, in this case, isolate the single variable. So if you add 8 back to both sides, you have that. And again, that should, that should kind of ring a bell as a parabola. So you can find your vertex, focus, your directrix, all that good stuff like that. Okay? So that is the process. So once you know how to do complete the square, you can take anything that's in general form and be able to write it in standard form so you can do that. Now, I told you I was going to give you kind of a shortcut to recognizing what you're going to have. Okay? And here's your shortcuts. So if you only see one squared term, I don't care which one it is, if it's just an x squared or just a y squared, it's going to be automatically a parabola. Okay? What if you have two squared terms with the same sign but different coefficients? So something like this, right? So we have 2x squared, we have 5x squared, and we got y squared, but they have different numbers in front. Well, that's an ellipse. If you have two squared terms, both of them with the same sign and the same coefficient, so like a 4x squared and a 4y squared, that's going to be a circle. And then the dead giveaway, if you have two squared terms, it doesn't even matter what the coefficients are, but if one's positive and one's negative, then that's going to be a hyperbola. Okay? So right off the bat, if you, again, you want to take a, a screenshot or uh, or kind of drop those down. Uh, that's kind of a shortcut to know as soon as you see general form, you can automatically know what it is you're going to get. Okay. And then the last thing, uh, actually, I guess that was the last thing. Um, remember, that is um, how you do complete the square. And uh, taking general form of a, of a conic section and taking it into standard form and then being able to find all the attributes. So the assignment this week <clears throat> is going to be just a few practice ones on getting that complete square process down. Um, and I'm also going to ask you to graph those same ones. I'm going to give you like four, four different equations, probably one of each conic section, but not tell you which one's which. Have you kind of figure that out? do complete the square and then find the different attributes just like we've been doing the past few weeks. Okay? If you have questions, please uh, make sure and drop me an email or log into the Google Meet Room during the week. Uh, I hope you and your family are doing well. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we will look forward to seeing you guys again next week. <clears throat> and until then, keep studying. <laughs>